Hello everyone, and welcome back to the magical world of Spry Tile and AE Sprite. Uh, after completing the last two episodes where I was playing around with creating outdoor scenes and then a, a sort of a dark cave situation, I decided to see what it would be like to create an interior. So here's my attempt at uh, looking at what might be inside if you stepped into that house that we made back in the first episode. And uh, here I am creating a few basic tile textures. Got a, a nice wood plank for the floor and sort of a stucco or a, a whitewash for the walls. And uh, a little bit of a stone texture there. I didn't end up using that one, but it still works as a nice texture. I might use that somewhere else later. And of course, uh, some black for the, uh, just to be sort of a blocker. So uh, when you're looking at this uh, interior against the black background, those uh, black tiles will uh, shield what will shield the uh, backs of the other tiles, the the bottom of those interior walls, so you're not distracted by them. And of course, there is a little bit of uh, wood across the top to help uh, solidify where, where the boundary is, because we don't want those walls to be paper thin. And here I am dropping in my basic character into the scene, and uh, now I'm thinking about creating a window. And I decided to go with this sort of diamond shape because uh, sort of you know, 17th century houses had this nice little pattern in them and this scene also needs a little bit of blue in it because you know, I, I, I'm finding that I'm using orange a lot when I'm creating things so any excuse to drop in a little bit of blue or green is really nice. So after getting window up I decided that you know it'd be interesting to see what happened if we put some curtains in front of it because you know just a bare window uh, people don't like that. They like to put something in front of them. So here I am designing a curtain texture and uh, just a sort of a orange you know, uh, busy pattern with a little bit of verticality to it just to sort of mimic cloth. And uh, here I am with an alternative design. I thought, you know, how about some like a flower, flower print? Maybe not, you know, authentic to the uh, 17th century, but uh, it still looks nice. I mean, it, it could have happened. Uh, and let's see, uh, working on a few more of these wooden separators. You can sort of see the 3D scene in the uh, bottom corner there. Uh, just uh, turning the corners like that, uh, you need a couple of different types of uh, wood beam patterns just to cover uh, having wood on the left, wood on the right, having a corner join. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And here's just some alternative designs for the wall. It would have been nice to have some uh, vertical struts there to sort of break up that wall and here I'm thinking about putting down a rug and having some fun with the different ways of creating a pattern here. I'm using four-way symmetry here to get that sort of four-way symmetry that you'll see on things like Persian rugs and in the end I decided to just go with something a little bit looser and then put a yellow band around the side and it looks a little bit like a rug. It's, uh, I think it works maybe a little bit too close in color to the floor tile but um, it should make that living room area or that entrance area a little bit cozier and here I am creating a wood texture at this point I'm thinking of making a table you can sort of see what's gonna be the top of the table hovering in space there and also coming up with a little uh, runner to go around the sides of the table and yeah I'm really uh, reusing a lot of uh, textures here in the different uh, different models but uh, this is the first model we came up with, or I came up with, and I'm uh, doing a little bit of crafting here, cutting some corners off the edges of the table so that it looks a little bit rounder, give it a little bit of character, and trying to avoid having too many perfectly square shapes in this. And now I'm uh, measuring it up to the character because tables come up to about waist high. Um, if they're too high, if they're above waist high or below waist high, they just look kind of funny. And chairs are normally knee high, at least the seats are. So uh, measuring that up against the character too, and putting in the chair, and he's got sort of a basic dining room set going on here. And as you can see, I'm uh, playing around with the UVs, uh, make, mapping or matching them up to uh, existing uh, textures I've already made. Um, with these sort of 3D shapes, they're a little bit different than the uh, 2D tiles that I've been working with so far. Uh, with uh, tiles, you're sort of, they're good for large, broad areas like terrain or uh, like walls where you have the same 
image repeated many times. They don't work quite so well for these 3D shapes I'm finding. And uh, here I'm creating a little bit of a shelf to put on the wall. And uh, creating a bookshelf now too. Just to uh, give us some more things to do in this house. And let's see, uh, putting it in there and uh, putting the little wooden panel on the back and uh, aligning the different parts of the bookshelf so that they all line up. And we're going to be putting a few things on these shelves and bookshelves soon because just having them empty like that looks, uh, looks like something's missing. And here I am adjusting the color of the bookshelf just to make it a little bit darker because as I was saying before, everything is sort of moving towards this middle orange and I wanted to have a little bit more variety. I figured, you know, if there's a kitchen, if there's a dining room, there must be a kitchen somewhere. And if there's a kitchen, there must be a stove to cook stuff with. So here I am desi designing a stove. And um, I actually did this twice. The first time I did it, I did a 12-sided sort of cylinder. And uh, I didn't like that so much. Uh, so I decided to go with a 16-sided one. You're going to see that shortly. Yeah, here I am putting the 16-sided one and copying my uh, previous one as much as possible. And the reason I did that was so that uh, it would be easier to stick that little uh, uh, boiler, that little grate thing I created on the front, on the front of it. Because uh, if you uh, have the uh, a 12 sided cylinder, when you try to cut it into pieces, uh, you it, it didn't match up very well. So I, I went with the 16 just to have a better, um, a better UV layout so that I could map these textures more closely to uh, the thing I was trying to create. Anyhow, I created a uh, quick iron texture, which is just sort of a dark gray texture with uh, even darker bumps on it just to give a little bit of roughness, and here I am coming up with the stovepipe, which again, still just sort of a grayish black, but with a couple of stripes in it to look like little, um, those little, where two cylinders might attach if you're actually building an actual pipe. I'm not sure what they're called, but maybe those would be sort of the weld areas. And right now it's uh, sort of off by the bookshelf, which is not really a logical place to have a stove. So I'm creating some uh, tiles for a little kitchen area. Gonna move that stove in shortly. And uh, here I am creating a little bit of borders so that uh, the wooden tile texture doesn't stop immediately at the uh, little uh, stove, at the kitchen tiles there. There's uh, that little border helped an awful lot in separating the two different types of texture. And anyhow, now that the stove's in place, I was thinking, you know, what better to put on a bookshelf than some books? So here I am designing a bunch of different books, different colors, and uh, that little um, beige rectangle with the sides can be uh, sort of the pages. And now I'm assigning those textures to the books, create another 3D object. The nice thing with books is that uh, you can make them rectangles and they kind of work. And now I put them on the shelf. And there's a lot of books to put on the shelf. Actually, uh, here, before, this is sort of a, something I did a little bit before. I decided to use physics to make the books fall onto the shelf so that they look a little bit more natural. But uh, my models are so small, that just caused the books to jiggle around randomly and the physics simulation didn't really work. So I went back to doing it manually and just putting those books one next to another. And uh, then I decided, you know, uh, if these people are gonna eat, there's probably gonna be a bottle of wine around somewhere. Or even just a bottle of anything because you know they stored lots of stuff in bottles back in the day. So here's a green bottle with a label on it and I had a couple of attempts at the label because I felt it was a little bit too narrow the first time. Just playing around with the number of uh, edges on our shape here. And also playing around with the textures. Uh, for a glass bottle it might be a little bit noisy. I guess this doesn't have to be a glass bottle. This could be a clay bottle, in which case the speckles would make sense. In any case, um, if you're gonna have some food, you need something to serve the food with. So I'm making a bit of a kettle here. And uh, playing with the um, UVs here so that I can map it to an existing tile because uh, by the default unwrapping sort of gave me a crazy UV shape. And creating a wooden bowl here out of the uh, first iron bowl that we created. I actually took that same basic shape and turned it into several different types of bowls just by taking the existing shape and expanding areas and contracting others. 
So uh, there you just saw a ceramic bowl go in. And uh, if you're gonna have a bowl, it probably makes sense to have a spoon. Uh, those go well together, especially if you're having soup. And let's see what I do next. So oh, a frying pan, of course. And this is going to be going on the stove uh, so that you can cook stuff with. And at this point, I'm just thinking, racking my brain, thinking of different things that you might have in the kitchen. And of course, here's a plate. And uh, it's, it's really challenging, just uh, thinking of all the different things that can be in a kitchen. And here I am, this is towards the end, uh, we've got the uh, circuit wash basin going in. So uh, it's uh, useful to have large tubs. Uh, they're not so common in houses these days, but if you want to have a bath or if you want to clean some clothes or uh, just splash around for a while, these things are really useful. So I decided to create one of those and having a little bit of trouble deciding the right way to come up with a, a texture for it, or a texture for it, I eventually came up with this, which is uh, just tiling uh, that, I created some extra long sort of a wooden planks there and just repeating that across the bottom. But uh, this is the sort of um, tub tile you might see in a uh, in an old fashioned house. And let's see, what am I designing now to? I've forgotten. But uh, oh yeah, and I decided to extend the house to give me some more room and to, well, to give me some more room, to have some more rooms to put stuff in. So you can see I'm uh, just quickly in, quickly uh, laying down first a floor and then a few walls and then uh, putting the bl black blocking on the outsides of the walls. And I'm gonna be moving a little bit of furniture in there shortly. But uh, a lot of this has just been, you know, thinking about what sorts of things you, you, might you see in a house and looking at photographs of houses just to remind yourself uh, what stuff might be there. Even just walking around your own house saying, you know, if I were living here, what would I want? And uh, yeah, I'm moving on to the bedrooms now and here's my idea for a dresser or a chest of drawers could work either way. And uh, just starting with this beige texture, I'm not so excited about it. It seems a little bland and boring to me, but it does get across the idea of a chest of drawers. So I might work on this a little bit more, but I think uh, sort of the basic idea is here. And instead of putting in an actual drawer, we just have a, a picture of uh, a drawer and handles on the front. But anyway, that is it for that session. It was a lot of work, but uh, I think I learned a lot. I think I also have some uh, new ideas for ways I might handle those 3D objects. As I was saying earlier, the uh, uh, using the sprite technique is useful if uh, for sort of broad areas like floorboards or walls or you know, uh, outside patches of grass or patches of stone in a cave. But when you're modeling you know, individual objects like stoves and books and plates and things like that, uh, it's not so easy because then you're sort of doing more traditional UV mapping. In any case, um, I'm going to be moving on. I uh, wanted to post what I have now because there's no way I could post everything in a single video and there's still more work to do. So I hope you got something out of this. Come back next time as I continue to explore all the neat stuff you can do in Blender. Right, goodbye for now.